came up a little while ago that we were talking about uh, spray booths, and uh, Dave heard us talking about it and thought it'd be a good presentation. We had somebody we were hoping to be here tonight, uh, well, a few weeks ago, and they couldn't make it, so we decided to move forward with the presentation on spray booths. The main reason I'm a little passionate about it is um, I was stupid enough a few years ago trying to make one of our make it to one of our club contests, and I was spraying outside and decided to inhale as I was spraying. Got some nice to me a primer down my throat, which burned my throat, and I could feel it right in my chest, and it didn't leave me for several hours or until the next day. So it's not just that. I find a lot of guys. You go to some of the hobby stores that <clears throat> allow you to work there, but they allow you to spray there. I'm sorry, but. It, if you're not venting out, you're killing everybody slowly. And if you're using to me acrylics, you're really not using acrylic. You're using a lacquer-based acrylic. Um, oh, you're talking about spray bombs? No, I'm talking about just their acrylics. I mean, it doesn't smell anything, but it's still nice. It's got a smell to it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I mean, you use some of the other ones like the Delary acrylics and some of the other Vallejos. They don't smell half as much. It's not just about the smell. It's about the vapor and it's about the particulate. Um, you don't want to get that inside you. And I don't know if anybody has through the years. I remember using spray cans when I was younger and then suddenly you go to the wash and look in the mirror and you can see all that paint's gone up in your nose. So you're breathing that down inside. Um, I just feel it's really important to understand what you're using and how to use it properly so that you can uh, somehow um, have to, you know, use it properly and be safe and have a clean area. So there's several ways to do this. There is, you know, a, a DIY project where you can make it yourself. There is portable, which is the one that I have. Um, not that I use it as a portable. And then there is uh, other um, types that we have which that are available that are metal. And they're quite expensive, $300 and up. And then there's different ways to draw. Um, the ideal, most of them draw from the back. Uh, John's here is set up to draw from the back. Mine draws from the back. Um, I've seen a few people that have them that draw from the top. That's actually imperfect. It's not the best solution, actually, for particulate. The best is actually to draw from below. Um, the reason is because... You make sure it's filtered so you don't lose your parts if something goes wrong. Yeah, so I mean, I've seen some guys in the car. I know one guy in particular, a buddy of mine in, in Woodbridge, has one set up right in his hobby room upstairs, and he's got it vented right through the brick outside. He's got a bottom draw. It's perfect. So the particulate is heavy. While you know, some of it will be in the air while you're spraying, you're going to breathe it in. It quickly drops. And some people claim that that's how you're not going to breathe it in because it's, it's, it's totally false. You're going to breathe it in. Uh, but it's the best way to, to draw. Secondary would be back top. It's not the best way. You're fighting gravity when you're doing it. As far as vapors go, I think just about anything, any, any system works. So I'll start quickly with, with what I purchased. Now I bought this a few years ago at Horner Hobbies. I think I paid somewhere between, I don't know, 150 to 125, maybe as much as 175, I really can't remember. But Princess Auto recently had these on sale for 99 bucks, which is a steal. Uh, Dave Bailey went by there today and they're already sold out. Now, I'm not going to fold this down because I've set it up and I've modded it up a little just temporarily because I'm playing with it, but I tend to take all the masking tape off and use a better tape and, and have a system to a tray I can keep putting in there. It all folds, I mean, it, when it all folds down, it looks like an 80s ghetto blaster. But uh, it it's actually draws out through a very, probably the largest uh, CPU fan, computer fan that I've seen. Uh, I, I have looked online actually to find if there's a more powerful one because I'd like it to draw even more, quite honestly. But um, it is set to be portable. It does all pack down. It's amazing how it all folds down and just ends up being inside this box. Your filters are in line here. I'll turn this around so you can sort of see what's going on in there. And you can see I've just taped up all the seams. I've put cardboard in there just as my tray. There's your filter. It's very much in a way like furnace filters. When you run out of these, you could probably just use use that. All that's doing is, is trapping the particulate. But again, I've seen these kits come with a hose that then, for some reason, they've got it going 
up to here, and then it looks like a vacuum crevice tool or something going like this. That's just blowing back into your face, so I don't understand that at all. But I think that's actually, I've seen them uh, for putting in a crack of the window. So that's great. You put it in the crack of the window, but then the window is all open for the yeah. rest of the space, so if your pressure's wrong, it's just going right back into the room. So what I've done in this case, and I'll turn this on, it's incredibly quiet. Um, this is my spacer for the window. Again, just simply cardboard. But what I've done with this is it had a cage. It had a cage that came with it that just went on the back. But when I looked at it, and I went to Home Depot, I noticed that the dryer vent uh, brackets, this is was a double male fitting that I cut off on the one side. But the holes are elongated, so it fit perfectly there. So I took the cage off, I put the bracket on, and then the brackets that they give you are just clamps that you just squeeze and, and grab on for the hosing. So it, it makes a perfect solution. And then this is the same double mail that I sandwiched between two pieces of cardboard. And then you can see the air is 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 pushing is pushing the, the, the door. The door is simply like it would be for your dryer. You don't want bugs and animals getting in. I only have this in temporarily, I don't leave it in all the time. I open my basement window, I put it in, I do my spraying, I pull it out and close the window again. So, uh, as you can see, it doesn't make a lot of noise. Some of the other ones might make more noise. Um, I'll just take this right off. And that's, as you can see, your, your computer fan. How many cubic feet per minute does it say it on people? It's, um, airflow is three, M3 per minute. Meters cubed. Meters cubed per minute, then, is it? Noise is 47 decibels. Uh, it's got the extended dimensions, which are 48 by 42 by 36, and when it's all packed down, it's 42 by 15 by 24. Standard wall plug in is 25 uh, watts. How many meters? Three. So the other way I've modded this, Do you this like nine box of yard or a yard? What did we say? It's roughly, what, three feet a meter? So. Okay, so I found that when I was using the booth, and although this is a, a fairly clear material, it's uh, opaque. Um, uh, translucent. Translucent, thank you, I'm going the other way. Um, it, it just wasn't, no matter how much light I put in, and I see some guys have put lamps to the top of these. But there's a store on Dixie Road right near my, my office where they sell LED solutions. So they have strips and they have extrusions. And they also have diffusers. So I don't know if you can see here, because I've used Velcro to put them in, right? I know it's quite bright. Um, That's excellent. Wow. It's a diffuser, so it, you don't get all those beams of light. I've got the top one off here, and you can maybe see a little bit that there are multiple shadows going in there. but. Um, overall, it gives a nice clean light when the diffusers are on. It, it's phenomenal when actually if I had something I could just put in there. How, how much did those lights uh, cost you, Bruce? So, if I remember correctly, you get them in, you get the light strips in about a three foot section and it breaks at about every ten or eight inches. And then the wiring simple, it just gives you negative positive and, and you, you put, you buy all the accessories and you just solder this on yourself, and then it's a, a small power block, much like a uh, much like a laptop that you uh, just plug into the wall. Simple as that. I've got this all hooked into a power bar under my bench. I just come in, turn on, my lights come on, and when I want this to run, I just turn it on. Um, but the lighting's phenomenal. Like it, I just have, uh, I just love using this. Now, again, I personally would like to see more draw. I don't feel like it backs out. I'd actually like to see this cover come down to about here, just because I think when you spray it, it comes upwards, and I'd like to get it trapped and draw out more. I might be getting too picky, but I, I just have had that effect. And if you ask uh, Greg Goodale, he's had some serious issues with paints and so forth through his life, and it really hurt his lungs and so forth. So he's, he can tell you firsthand how deadly that can be. It doesn't have to be lacquered. The acrylics can get into it. I have to spray it. I got nailed when I was a teenager with poly strip on a lead figure. And I had industrial poisoning according to my doctor. My lining my throat got ripped. I was about two hours cleaning this uh, 77 mil figure. And I thought it was airflow. But 
obviously not enough. And that's another thing, right? I mean, when you're cleaning your airbrush too, you want to spray somewhere and pull that out. You don't want to just... Now, other than that, there's these items here, which I've got. These are great as well. I'm not sure who's this is. So this is Sandy's, and this is a spray pot. I'll let Sandy talk more about that because you, you brought that right too. Um, so essentially, this is what I have. It's off the shelf, other than the lights. Um, and the fact that I hooked up the, the, duck, the dryer duct uh, hosing very inexpensively and uh, you know I enjoy using it so overall it's been quite effective for me. Bruce? Yes. Question for you. Do you uh, I know it's, it's uh, obviously it's, a, it's an extractor and that but uh, because of your lights and set up like that are you able to just like clean up the, the things and keep it as a, a photograph? It's, it's a perfect I haven't thought to use it that way, but yeah, I mean, I could probably stick some white sheet behind yeah, there and then turn it into a photo book. Yeah, that's not a bad second use for it. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, no, it's a great idea. Well, especially if you're in smaller scale, like 172nd or even 124 scale. Just on a lazy Susan. Yeah, which I didn't bring, and there's also the Tamiya lazy Susans and things like that that you can spray with while you're while you're working in there. And turn things um, Sorry? I'm sorry, I can't use it. Yeah, well there's there's another point. I don't even though even though this thing's drawing, I still wear a respirator. And the the key with a respirator is two things. If you can smell the paint while you're wearing your respirator, your cartridges are done. Get rid of them and get new cartridges. The second thing is when you're not using your respirator, get a big baggie a big industrial type baggie and put them in there and zip it because when it's not in there, air just passing through it is slowly deteriorating the carbon filters. So a lot of people don't realize that, they just hang it on a peg. But the whole time that's hanging there, even if you don't paint for weeks, those filters are getting weaker and weaker and then more and more infected. So keep it in a bag, use it anyway just to be safe. I'm a really big proponent of that and that's mainly my reason for wanting to do this and because uh, that was a relatively inexpensive solution for me to get into a spray booth and exhaust it out, out the window. Um, I have a very small basement window that I'm putting it out of and I actually do this. I bought an IKEA fold down table. Um, it's got a shelf like that and the rest of the table folds down. It's got an excellent arm system that comes out and supports the table and that puts up to my eye height and I can vent it right within that, that hose distance that I showed you. Like that is the distance, so I want that to go as little distance as possible until it's going out the window. So that works well. And then when I'm not using it, I can take it down, fold down the uh, the table. Um, other than that, maybe John, you want to quickly talk about uh, your. I wasn't sure what Dave was going about with tonight. He said, you know, spray boost. So I brought something that I was gaming around with. Um, it's partly for the use with my son who does aircraft and he uses uh, acrylics. I use a lot of using stronger stuff to do it in the garage with the door open. Um, but I was trying to do it on the cheap and I wanted to figure out if one of these duct fans would work. This is like 20 bucks at uh, you know, either Princess or Canadian Tire or whatever and I'll plug it in and show you. It, it will not draw, I don't think it will draw the same volume as that. Um, so you can feel it from there. So what kind of fan is that? All it is, it's it's to it's an auxiliary fan for duct work. If you've got a room that's too cold, you can put one of these on it. And, and when you're spraying with it, it's not too bad. Is it okay for explosive? That's why he uses it for acrylics. But I wouldn't use it with lacquer because no, it's not. And that's although I have been. My son's an electrical engineer, so if I pull off anything that's kind of iffy, goes after me. So that's something, if I can just interrupt, I also wanted to bring up, so I'm glad you did. A lot of people are taking, like, um, kitchen hood fans and turning them into spray boots. But if you're a car guy and all you're doing is using lacquer spray bombs, you could potentially be setting yourself up for either a, a blow-up or a house fire. Yeah. Um, the fan that I'm using, I'm not absolutely sure it's brushless. You might be able to answer that better than I. I'm thinking, yeah. 
I mean, they say the best fan that you can use is a marine-based bilge fan yeah. because it, it has to be. It's pulling out fumes from the engine compartment and taking them outside. The Peacemaker, that's the three hundred dollar nice one that you see in fine scale. The steel one, yeah. Yeah, the guy the guy had it on display once in Toledo when I was there, and we were on about you know it's explosion proof and this that and the other. So they've gone through it and it has a huge draw and it's quiet. So what they don't talk to you in about when you're buying these is that they're not brushless motors, right? So if you're pl planning using lock, you still need to be careful. I really don't put anything like acrylic through that, so. The other thing you can do is run the fan first before you do it. A few months ago at Costco, they had small, you know, like the, the, the do some blowers that you have for your yard. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but they had a small one. It was like 20 bucks. Right. And the motor is external to the fan. So, to me, yeah. I thought that would be perfect for it because spring I had built it. Yeah. But I thought that would be perfect. It may be. Outside, or the motor outside the case. Yeah. And then you've got the motor and inside. And a swirl kind of draw more, too. Yeah. You get a scroll. Uh, the only problem is it's noisy. Larger. That's true, yeah, yeah. right? But I wonder, you know, sometimes I wish I had more draw. So, if I want more draw, <laughs> potentially I'm going to have more noise. Right, so um, like I said, I think there might be a fan for computers just one step up from that, but that's about all you're going to do. Yeah, I'd like to see that. So John, did you have uh, any more on yours? Sorry no, to interrupt. Just, I was playing with the, the idea of the light. The, the secret that keeps this in is just the strength. Like I said, I'm trying to do it with cheap. This stuff, I have I have a whole slew of this, but you, you know. But I just took the string and wove it back and forth so that it has something to push against it and there's easy access to it. I, I was playing around with the geometry of what would work, where I could put lights, etc., um, just to give it some brightness for him. Um, but it stops him shooting it all over the place. Because he comes home to use <laughs> my nose to model. And you know, you might think Oh, the light too. Any, anything with light helps. This is the uh, material from some of these. Anything that's going to scatter it off a bit. And then this was, <clears throat> this can be plugged in or it can be just shot on batteries. I usually have two of them. Uh, I put them on the sides later. I mean, the pro once you get one of these, you want more and you want more and you want more, and then and you realize, hey, I can do this with this and this. I want something that's six feet long when it opens up to put some big boats. I've got so, the room, but two things. So um, you may think that the cardboard may not be sufficient. First of all, this is very heavy duty cardboard. If you're thinning your paints right down, and, and especially if you had a tray liner that you can keep changing out, I think you'd find that sufficient yeah. enough to use for years. Now, Chuck Rothman was going to bring in his DIY, which apparently he's now gone to a permanent situation. But he used a clear um, storage uh, tray tub. So he, you know, no cover. He just had that your open area, and he put a fan in the back. I didn't get to see it up close. I did see it quickly once. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't make it tonight. Hold on, I got some pictures here. Put up. So he found it quite effective, but he has changed recently to uh, to um, uh, this permanent situation, which I also have not seen yet. So I guess that's so that's Chuck's newest uh, permanent situation. So he actually built a wood frame and uh, put the fan in the back. Well, I think he's got an angled top there because he mentioned to me that he actually uses, uses has the fan on the top. So he's used the kitchen. Uh, stove range fan. This is apparently looking down uh, the back of it. Just looks like he's duct taped in some. Uh, the, home, the, the stove ones might be okay because they're, they're suitable to handle grease sometimes. Yeah. But if you're using acrylics again, you're. I mean, yeah. it's, it's only a question if you're using the lacquer, lacquer based paints, right? What happens if you use a digital motor instead? Should be fine. Should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's I would think so. Is there a problem with the temperature? <coughs> or is the no, it's, it's a, a brushless fan means there's no sparks during the process, or there can't, there's, no, there's no potential of sparks being there, I should say. The, the rotational part is completely So, uh, since, since the Canadian government, or some scientists have just said it's not healthy to do stir fried food, because yeah. it puts microscopic particles of fat in the air and you breathe it, and the fat gets in your lungs. 
So all those people working at McDonald's. Well, I'm thinking I'm, I'm not going to cook my own, but I'll go for it. Because <laughs> I was thinking one of the, you know, those meshes you can get to put over the stop it, don't cover your stove. I thought that might be good. And my wife said, no, no, listen to the article carefully. Oh, it's, it's microscopic stuff. So the one thing John didn't show yet here is that he used some furnace ductwork, yeah. right? To take yeah. it out the back of the window. Cheap. So uh, there are things that you can... I've seen a ton of DIY spray booths online. <coughs> There's many different ways of doing it, many motors. Uh, the this is, this is the Peacemaker made out of You know why they call it the Peacemaker? Because your wife won't get angry when That's you what use I it. Said That's what the guy told me. <laughs> So that one also, you can see the pipe, the ducting at the top, that also draws from the top. It's not the ideal method of, for pulling up the particulate, but it will, it is good for getting the vapor out. That's all I got. Okay. Guys, any questions? You know what LED? we've talked about here? What's that LED store? Do you remember where it was? It's called Sunstar LED. It's at the corner of um, Meyer side and Dixie. It's in the, well, it's actually on the north. <laughs> Uh, northeast corner. Okay, there's two sets of buildings. It's a little farther north. You have to drive in and then you sort of follow along Dixie. Uh, Derek is the owner. Very helpful. They what they what the majority of their products are for the sign industry. So they make all kinds of thin LEDs for illuminating signs. They they even have uh, daylight and uh, incandescent type bulbs. All LED product. But what are they calling it? Sunstar LED. I think it's sunstarled.com. But, you know, it's best to go to the store. The website doesn't do it justice. And if you go, they're very helpful. And they've just got, I swear, they've got a solution for anything you're trying to light. And very little heat pulls off of it. I'm very happy with that. And these strip lights that come in these lengths, you can use them in your display cabinets, too. Okay, You've so got very excited to see what corner? North? Northeast corner. If you, you want to website, shoot, shoot me the, the email uh, after I can, when I post this up on the website video, I can put a link to uh, the store as well. Yeah, so we'll That's Okay, I don't want to spend time on another freaking website. I'm, this is fast. Old school. But you do want to spend time on the field scale model. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I got enough here. So, My fiberglass store is on Mary's side. Sorry, what? So, uh, I do wood burning and uh, wood carving. Yeah. Now, uh, for uh, removing wood. Uh, wood dust, uh, yep. for instance, using a uh, for power carving, uh, like a boredom or a, a drum. Um, wood grinding. Pardon? Wood grinding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just just for removing dust and, and uh, uh, things like that. Uh, uh, this is again, this this is ideal. But I was just wondering whether the uh, uh, a lot of a lot of carvers will use the. The, the fans that are computers yeah. and then built something similar. And now it's not this. I guess, I guess this is not as near as critical as uh, uh, lacquer fumes or uh, acrylic. I won't use lacquer in the house because of the flames don't. You can have a sawdust explosion. Of course, you get sawdust. You get sawdust. You get wood flour. Sunstar LED. Sunstar LED. That's correct. But to just to just remove uh, remove uh, smoke and dust fumes uh, when you're wood burning. Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, you're basically air. It's all ductwork. So Sandy's going to uh, talk about uh, something he uses. I, okay, right here. This is the easiest thing actually, if you want to. When you're uh, this is just uh, basically when you're uh, cleaning your airbrush. For example, like this here. You just basically put your. You just basically put this. Uh, you vent you. This just sits here like that, and you just uh, any unused paint you just into there, and then same thing when you're cleaning it, you put your uh, I use methyl hydrate mainly for cleaning uh, Tamiya paint. You just vent it into there, like this. so. And after a while, you, I I quite often put a uh, no tissue in there. Once the tissue gets full. Just take it out, clean it out, and uh, put another one in there. You can buy these anywhere. I, I think it's about 25 bucks at uh, Curry's. 
There's a vent. There's a vent. Yeah, there's not. There's a little, there's a little filter here. There's a little filter here. And after, you see how the filter there's got some stuff in it? So, I mean, it's better than nothing. Can you bring that a little bit to the camera here? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah, this here we are. This is a little vent in here. You can actually buy separate ones. And you get these from, uh, you buy from Curry's. There's the uh, stuff in there. So I have one of these as well, and they are excellent because you can just stick your airbrush right in there, yep. and just you're you're blowing it out. You can you're, instead of putting it up through your through your uh, spray booth, you can just blow it all into yep. there, yep. and it's filtering out to here, and you don't have to worry yeah. about. It. Yeah, that's what I use, and I use normally use methyl hydrate for cleaning the Timia paints, which I think is not really the best thing to breathe in, but. That's an. This is a harder steam bed, Infinity, one of the better airbrushes available. Oops. It's a German airbrush. This is the cup. This is the. Hey. What is it? Is it a cloth? Cloth or a paper towel? It's a paper towel. Oh, okay. That's the cover to go on the Harder Steam Bank. Okay. If you just move a foot over there, blocking the projector, oh, you guys can maybe see it a little better. Yeah, sure. There's the, there's there the, 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 they were asking me, this is the, this is the uh, Harder Steam Bank air, uh, hey guys. airbrush. Guys. It's, uh, guys. Guys. One of the better airbrushes out there available now. It's um, it's nice. I like it because it's, you can you can do everything with it's finger tight. It's a double action airbrush, similar to uh, some of the eye waters. I, I tend to like eye water. I, I also like the harder steam bag as well. There's a typical uh, eye water H, HPC high performance, similar. These go anywhere around about the two hundred dollar mark. This one's a nice one. This is also this is actually a, a point one five needle, so it's for very very fine stuff. This one here is a point. Uh, this is a point three needle on the HPC. But I do have. If you do get the harder steam back, I would recommend you get the point four as well as a point one five. Because the problem with a point one five is um, it's <clears throat> you get such a small area of paint but you have to pull it back to get a, a decent uh, coverage and by doing that by the time the paint actually hits the plastic it's, you get orange peel so really for, for general modeling you want a point I say that around about a point three needle point three point three five for a really de a delicate work point one five but as I say um, uh, this is pretty well useless for unless you're doing very very tight patterns where it is good Keep dropping this here uh, being stuck, if you want to talk about airbrushes, this, this is these are double action siphon type. <coughs> everybody at one time or another, everybody starts off with the old Cash AH, which is a single action airbrush, which is actually a more than adequate airbrush. It really is. You can do pretty well everything with this. These you can do with this. And it's about, I think I paid for this in 1979. I think I paid 30, no, about 60 bucks for it. At, uh, I think it was in Buffalo. At uh, Ace Hobbies, and I think today they're sixty bucks today. Ace is in Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls, yeah. So Ace, I think I paid sixty bucks. This is like nineteen seventy-nine or sixty, no, seventy-nine, and I think today they're the same price. So talk about it. things haven't gone up. But anyway, so uh, that's, that's all I use basically is uh, use one of these things, and uh, for getting rid of all my unused paint and unused uh, uh, chemicals when I'm cleaning it. And it, it's obviously not as good as, 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 good as, a, uh, as a, a fan, but uh, it's better than venting it directly to the air. And you can get these, I say, from Curry's for maybe 25, 30 bucks. Yeah, if you're using an airbrush, I highly recommend getting one of these spray pots yeah. because they're just, uh, they're indispensable. And honestly, yeah. for the amount that you spray in there, you know, if you're doing it on weekends, by the time you go back, the stuff inside is pretty much evaporated. But yeah. it's all closed off and it's all filtered. So it's, it's a great way to just, you know, extricate the, I guess that's the right word, clean out the brush yeah, essentially. Yeah. Um, they're, worth, they're worth the investment, for yeah, sure. Yeah, you really want to keep them clean to wax them to start with. I mean, in the airbrush? No, in the glass. Yeah. I mean, if you're OCD, wax it first. Yeah. <laughs>
I think I always actually I have, I have a window by the side of my, my in front of my desk I have a window so I usually open the window but uh, uh, I use to me a paint but I use them with the lacquer either the lacquer or with the uh, Gunza leveling fluid which is yeah. uh, in fact the, the Tamiya paints were actually although they they come with the acrylic uh, X20 is it or yeah. the, that they were actually designed for to be used with acrylics as with the uh, lacquer I mean I maybe spray maybe I don't know not not for, as I don't build a sh well I build a fair amount but. I don't spend a lot of time spraying. Yeah. Compa I mean, I, I used to work with a guy at Syntrax, <coughs> and he would uh, he would uh, be spraying because he was a sprayer, and he had a cigarette going and be spraying at the same time. Yeah, Mind yeah, you, he looks he looks like a, he's about thirty five, he's about nineteen, died of lung cancer. So you know, right. I guess it's all relative. Yeah. He's a French guy, and oh god, he's. he's but anyway, I think it's always better to, if you can, uh, err on the case you know, uh, to uh, have something like a. If you're doing it a lot, then get a spray booth definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, Andy. That's really good. That's really helpful. I really, I'm glad you brought the, the spray pot. Yeah. I, I can't recommend that enough either. Again, the reason uh, I wanted to just get a presentation going on spray booths is to show you, you know, how relatively inexpensively you can get into this. Um, and I think for health reasons, it's really important. But to me, at the end of the day, if you're wearing the respirator while using that, you're, you're completely I think you're so. completely safe. Even, if, even when those masks, you know, like a doctor's mask, I think that cuts most of the stuff. Yeah, I mean, if, you get, if you're extricating most of it through that and then using a mask, that's helpful. Yeah. Um, now, Bill Allen also brought a few brushes, just talking in general about airbrushes from uh, low end to medium range to high end. Yeah, and, I don't uh, really. I don't have anything really high end. Uh, well, no, they, you, you beat me in that. The hardest stream back is pretty high. Hands down. Um, <coughs> um, when it comes to airbrushes, if um, if you're of the mind that the cheaper the better, then I'm not the person to talk to. So if you believe in like, oh, I'll go to uh, eBay and I'll get a Chinese knockoff, don't talk to me because I believe you get what you pay for. And so what I brought in with me is I brought in, well, what used to be a low-end Iwata and a kind of a middle Iwata, but now they've got the new Neo, well, which is like... Neo, the Neo's not uh, an, it's an Iwata, it's a Chinese, not, it's a made in China. But the thing is, it's an entry point now. Yeah. Uh, I think if I was, if I was gonna, if I was starting again, I, I, quite, I use the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the well, okay, the three brushes that I brought in, I, I brought in um, a Revolution, which yes. used to be yeah. the entry-level water yes. brush. It is, um, I like gravity feed, so I don't buy anything where the bottle attaches at the bottom. So all of my brushes are gravity feed. Um, it's dual action, so it's <coughs> push down for air, pull back for paint and that's just the, the style I like. And um, so this is a revolution. You notice the handle, nothing fancy. Um, it, it does its job and it's, it's a .5, so it's a pretty large opening, but it's good for spraying fairly high volumes. I also brought in an Eclipse, which is the step up. And there's a distinct difference in the head assembly of an Eclipse and the Revolution. And I like, I like the Eclipse better and I can take them apart and show you. And I brought in the equivalent of a low-end Harder and Steenbeck. And um, this one is a point two, so this is only for minute details. If you're looking for broad coverage, this is not the brush you're going to use. But I really love the, um, the head assembly in a Harder and Steenbeck. Well, Impression. Just taking off the cap. <coughs> Where'd you buy yours from? Your hardest team best stuff from? I do a lot of stuff on Kijiji, so I keep my eyes open all the yeah, time. And this is the part that I like. And maybe you can. Yeah. That is the nozzle. Yeah. Okay, it's substantial. It has got a Teflon O ring attached to it. And the thing is, for three of Harder and Steenbeck's lines, the nozzles are all interchangeable. The needles are interchangeable. So all, the only thing that's different about the Harder and Steenbeck airbrush are the bells and whistles. Whether you get a stop adjustment on the back, whether you've got a cutaway handle, but all of the nozzles, all of the needles are interchangeable between 
three different levels of airbrushes, and I really like that. And I mean, it's so easy. You can just pick up the nozzle and you just drop it in. Yeah. It's that easy. And then you put your cap on over top of it. And as you said, everything is finger tight. That's all. No wrenches, right? So you don't need a wrench to remove the nozzle. It's like, just like Iwata has that small ah, wrench, which is easily right. lost. Okay. Elm City Hobbies in New Brunswick, so... Um, I don't know if I can hold this, but if you can get in on the nozzle, but it is a very tiny nozzle. You need a very small wrench to remove it. It is really easy to strip the threads and basically make your airbrush toast. Um, it's still a good airbrush. It functions well. It atomizes the paint well, which means it sprays well, but... The, the nozzle, yeah, this is a, I want to sell a small wrench for um, removing, it just slides down over top of the nozzle and you can, you can twist it out, but I always get nervous when I'm taking the nozzle out of this brush. Usually, usually what I do is I just disassemble all the pieces and I submerge the whole thing into my ultrasonic and I don't even worry about taking the nozzle out because I'm afraid I'm going to um, screw up the airbrush permanently and so the Eclipse has got a different kind of architecture in the head and I like it a lot better so after you take all of all of your crown cap, your nozzle cap, etc. off the thing about the Eclipse is that it is a self centering nozzle that drops in so you don't have to worry about anything with threads or wrenches again. So it's kind of like the same idea as the Harder and Steen bet. Um, Self-centering. So all you need to do, I'm going to pull my needle back a little bit on this, is you just drop the nozzle into the opening. Okay. And then all you need to do is put your um, crown nozzle cap back on, thread it on, and it's good to go. So I like this design, and I really, the Eclipse is my go-to airbrush. I use it probably more than anything else. And what I did for this is I went to the optional parts, and I got the optional needle and the optional nozzle, so I got the 0.5, because the Eclipse normally comes with the 0.35, and I went for a larger size, which allows me to spray anything I want. I don't have to worry about the nozzle getting gummed up. So if I've got um, a paint with pearl powder in it, which is pretty sizable, uh, particulate, compared to normal paint, I don't have to worry about it with a 0.5. So those are sort of um, the three airbrushes. I, I like the design of the Hydrogen Steenbeck. All I need to do is get a 0.4 needle and nozzle combination. It's about $70. Sorry? It's about $70. Yeah. I bought one uh, last week, or two weeks ago. The only thing I find is that they're, they're hard to find in Canada. Well, Elms, 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 in New, New, New Brunswick? Brunswick, they sell them. Right. Um, they're available from there. There used to be a, a good um, airbrush service out of Chicago. Unfortunately, it looks like they've gone belly up. It was called Chicago Airbrush. And, but there is one, um, shipping is almost identical from California called Coast Airbrush, and they carry the whole Harder and Steenbeck line as well. So, um, if you need spares, you need to sort of plan ahead with those airbrushes and make sure you buy them and you've got them on hand before you do something like bend a needle. But Iwata is almost, they've got really good distribution in Canada, so art stores, hobby stores, Wheels and wings are going yep. to be carrying the complete line of uh, Iowater as well as... Uh, now, what I, what I brought with me is I made some photocopies of the parts numbers uh, for the Eclipse and for the uh, Revolution. So if you'd like a copy of that, it has all your parts numbers, uh, including the optional parts numbers for the nozzle cap um, and the nozzle and the needle. So if you want to swap out then you've got the information there and all you need to do is take the information to a store and say this is what I want and they can get it for you. So, anyways. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bill, I have a question. Don't forget the nozzle.
Oh, yeah, we'll use that. Yeah. I'll let you do that first. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to thread this back on. Yeah. What's your question, Gates? My question is, when you start a model, yes. how do you decide which airbrush to use? What's the, what's the criteria? Paint? What kind of paint? Uh, the paint determines the airbrush. Okay. I mean, they're all really, they're all really good at atomizing, right? Taking the paint from a liquid form and making it into tiny pieces. So they do that very well. It's just a matter of the fact that some paints. Well, I guess if you thin any paint down enough, um, it's going to go through a, a fine nozzle. But if you're going through a 0 0.2 nozzle compared to a 0.35, you really have to thin it down, which means that you're going to be applying more coats. So you're going to be building your paint up very gradually. Um, so if I was doing something like on a car, a clear coat, then I want to go with a the 0.5, right? Because I want to be able to spray a nice heavy coat on there and not have to do multiple coats. And so that means I don't have to thin it as much. So, uh, I, Do you associate an airbrush with the brand of paint you're using, regardless of how you thin it? Well, most of the paints that I use, um, Tammy Acrylics, uh, I've got a couple of paints that I bought in the States from a specialist down there is called Bob's Paints, but they're lacquers. I've got some uh, Wicked Colors, which again are lacquers. Um, I have some testers, but very few. I don't really like their paints that much. So Testers acrylics? Uh, no, I've got some testers enamels. Okay. But they are, yeah, if I, if I sprayed them inside, you're, you're I, I would be outside. Yeah. Right. Sorry, you had a question? Mr. Paint? You've heard of Mr. Paint? Yeah, that's Mr. Mr. Paint. Mr. Paint? Mr. Paint? Uh -huh. um, you mean like from mean Mr. Gunzi? No, it's a different... Uh, it's a different Mr. Uh, Mr. Oh, there's one from Europe now, I think. Is it, yeah. is it called yeah, Mr. Yeah. Paint? Yeah, it's called Mr. Paint. Yeah. I've seen some of the... Um, they, have, they have longer bottles of... Thing. Is it the same as like Mr. Surfacer and all that? Same uh, no, 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 that's no. Mr. Color. I, think that's I bought some uh, recently. I bought some from a company called Mission Models um, yes. out of the New states, World. and they're acrylics as well. And um, they really they're catering mostly at this point to um, AFV. They haven't really got a lot of aircraft colors yet, but I think they're think intending to branch out. I think it was Vision Models paint that saw a credit value. And it, it's, it's good. And um, the the primer that I really like is the stuff from Badger called Steinal Res. Huh. The only thing is you have to really spray it at ungodly pressures. But it smooths out beautifully. It's it's Why great do you primer. Need the high pressure just to force 40 it PSI? Through, just to wow. force it through the, the airbrush? Yeah. Huh. But when it goes down, self-leveling, it's like glass. The stuff, and they come with uh, white, gray, black, um, an olive green, a red, a yellow. So they have all kinds of colors of, of their uh, their primers, and they really do the job. And in terms of like um, masking over top of them, they're great. They won't lift off, right? I've never bought any Vallejo, but I've heard some horror stories where people did. Vallejo primer, then they did really detailed masking jobs and they tore off the tape and everything came off, including so, the primer. So, you know, Francis has talked about using black Vallejo primer and then it lifts off. So, yeah, Vallejo, I don't use Vallejo um, primers anymore. Try, try uh, Steinal Res, the stuff yeah. from Badger. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's what I use, it's fantastic. You can see I mean, it, it wears, it sands, it feathers. Uh, you can sit there practically with like a screwdriver and scratch it, and the stuff is not going to come off. It's just like it's brutally strong. It really is. The MIG primer. The MIG primer. Have you tried? No. Because I was wondering if it's any good. So yeah. Well, what's it called? He says that or what he does for the panel lines, he sprays on a thick coat of primer, and then scribes into that. Would you be able to do that with that? I don't have as much scribing to do, mostly like door panels and things like that on on cars. So um, yeah, I know he he likes to do that, and then he gets 
he has such a thick layer that when he scribes, it gives a really nice, clean, um, like panel lines on the aircraft. And yeah, I've watched some of his videos. The guy's got great techniques. Sorry? Oh no, no. You know, you know. If you take um, like a, a scribing tool, trumpeter, Tammy, or whatever, it, no, it'll scribe. But it's just it's very durable. It's very durable. So, so. The, these mission paints you just mentioned, Bill. I know Francis, you've used those as well, and you like those through the brush. So have you sprayed those through the brush, Bill? Have you the mission paints? Have oh yeah, I spray them. I don't. I don't brush paint them. Right. right. But I mean, and how do you like airbrushing with those mission paints versus some of the other? They go. They good job. Yeah. They spray easily. So uh, they spray more easily than the Steino res. Oh, wow. <laughs> the Steino res is almost, you know, when you've got that kind of air pressure, it's, it's almost like, oh my God, you know, like, yeah. am I going to blow the brush out of my hand kind of thing? Oh. Bill, when you're shooting at 40 PSI, how diluted is, is your paint? You don't. You don't even cut it with anything. Oh, really? Steino res is basically, grab the bottle, give it a really good shake for about five minutes, right into the airbrush, and yeah, so it's not even, you don't even, you, have to get it down. you don't even dilute it. And it is extremely high PSI, but whatever the chemical nature is, the fact that it self-levels so well, I mean, it could go on there and think, oh my God, that's awful, right? And come back like five minutes later and it's like glass smooth. Every detail is there, right? So all the, the panel lines, the rivet detail, Everything is crystal What's clear. What's the name of that paint? Steino res? Steino res. Right. They combine styrene, a vinyl, and resin to get a name. Steino, Steino res. Which is not what it's made of, it's what it applies to. Is what right. You're well, they were trying to sell it as this is a good primer for absolutely anything you do. And how strong is that stuff? Is it pretty smelly, caustic stuff, or is it pretty. It's a little bit more potent than the smell of a Tamiya paint. Right. So. Is it any tougher to clean your airbrush after? No, nope. I just, I've got uh, a homemade concoction of airbrush cleaner that I put together, which has got a mixture of distilled water and windshield washer fluid and a few other things that I, and no, just run it through and it cleans it right out. Wow. So. Who sells that style res? Um, Badger, you said. Hornet. Wheels and wings. Vir virtually, I think probably most of the hobby stores will probably have Steinol res there now. And you said that's Badger or Testers? It's Badger. Badger. It's Badger. Huh. In fact, they um, they're now selling it in Europe under a different brand name called the Ultimate. So they've got a for the product from the ISM. But it's 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 great primer. It really is. So. I'm just reading on Facebook recently, there's a thing that I subscribe to, it's called Andy's Hobbies, and he does uh, uh, various different things. So uh, in the U.S. now, the Tamiya uh, Rust Color Primer yeah. is available, and uh, apparently it's very self-leveling, as you mentioned. It's, it's very easy going, it's just like the gray and the white primer. Yeah. It's about $10 a thing, but it lasts for quite a long time. Quite a while. And the other thing that he was talking about was uh, the new uh, Tamiya Airbrush. Uh, it's the black on the high frequency. Trigger yeah, style? Jeff. Pardon? Trigger style? No, no, no. It's, it's like oh, these. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, it's made by the same company that makes the Iwata. Yeah. So it's got the easy release. You can get the easy release pipe thing. And yeah. if you're using an Iwata and uh, the, yeah, that. Quick fit. disconnects. Yeah, quick yeah. disconnects. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that will fit on the Tamiya one as well, just on that. Video. Well, I think for most of the airbrushes, the um, thread size is pretty well standardized other than maybe a couple. Um, Badger I know has got a different thread size and quite possibly I think uh, Pache has got a different size. Yeah, it's all three are but different. But virtually um, Grex, Iwata, Tamiya, they're all using the same size so basically you know getting um, a quick disconnect will thread right on there yeah. and uh, you're good to go. Which, if you have multiple airbrushes and you don't have that set up, you're just gonna wish you'd done it years ago. I mean, just to quickly click that apart, put it in the okay. stand, switch brushes, and go with something else. Phenomenal. I'm lazy. That's why I bought them. Right. I, I found a, um, a store up on Finch. 
called Airbrushing for You. And um, oh, Frank. Yeah, he sells like a, a generic version. Yeah. And this is universal. So um, this quick disconnect, instead of paying ludicrous amounts for a Tamiya brand or whatever, yeah. I just went and bought like a bunch of them, and they were like three bucks a piece or something like that. And I put them onto all my airbrushes, and then I don't have to worry about it. So I just, uh, they're good to go, right? With a click, and it's they're on or off again. So we utilize airbrushes for you at uh, my work for some of our displays and projects. But most of his products, he's more based around the arts, acrylic based, t shirts, face painting. Um, he goes to the X every year, and every year at the X and does demos. But he has some stuff that's available that some of the hobby stores don't even have. And some of it's old inventory names. It's worth going by and checking it out. Well, all you got to call first, though, because you never yeah. know when he's going to be there. All kinds of adapters. So if you're yeah. looking from one thread size to another, he's got, like, bins and bins full of adapters there. And you're bound to, found, to find what you need yeah. uh, for the job. But uh, yeah. it's quite helpful. And, oh, he's uh, great. Fit, Finch and where, roughly? Finch just, no, no, well... On Finch, on the north side, Between and it's and um, west of Markham Road. Yes. No, it's way, way over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and nor on the north side, and right around the back of all the uh, units. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but does anybody else have any other questions to Bill's presentation on airbrushes or, or spray booths or anything while we're here? Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. guys. Thanks so much. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, buddy. Phenomenal. Thank you.